Hi everyone, my name is Jialin. Today I'm going to present you our work, MCL, Mixed Central Gloss for Collaborative Filtering. Before we dive into the paper, let me give you a quick background. Collaborative filtering is a widely used technique in recommendation system that can make predictions about the preferences of a user by collecting the preferences from other users. In modern deep learning approaches, they typically implement the collaborative filtering by learning the user and item embeddings. A pairwise loss is typically used in deep learning approaches to pull the positive pairs closer and push the negative pairs apart. Also, negative sampling is used to sample the negative pairs at each iteration to reduce the computational complexity. However, we have identified that existing pairwise loss allocates weight that solely depends on the differences in user distance between positive and negative pairs, which can lead to ignoring other important information such as relationship among items. And also, random sampling of negative items is inefficient at finding hard negative samples, which can lead to training on easier and less informative data. Now let's analyze the existing pairwise losses to show these drawbacks. The magnitude of the pull and push in the pairwise loss is determined by the gradient of each user item pair, and we can analyze it as weights. The equations shown below are the weights for positive pair and negative pair, where L is the loss, E is the distance of a user item pair, U is the user, J is the positive item, and K is the negative item. The loss for trivial loss and BPR loss are shown below, and we obtain their weights by taking the gradients with respect to EUJ and EUK respectively. The weight for trivial loss is 1 if the distance of a positive pair plus lambda is larger than the distance of a negative pair, and it's 0 otherwise. For BPR loss, it's negative sigmoid of the differences between the positive and negative pair. Both triplet and BPR loss can miss important information during the training process. On one hand, the triplet loss weights every qualifying pair equally, which can be suboptimal, particularly in the later stage of the training, where we want the model to focus on difficult pairs. On the other hand, the BPR loss weights pairs by the difference, which allows for dynamic weight allocation to emphasize harder pairs. However, since the pairs are sampled randomly, two pairs with highly varied difficulty could be sampled together leading to inconsistent weight allocation. For example, if a easy positive pair is sampled with a hard negative pair, the resulting weight can be excessive for the easy pair, but insufficient for the hard negative. We also know that these two losses only rely on the differences between the positive and negative pairs to determine the weights. In this paper, we propose a novel learning framework called MCL, Mixed Centric Loss. And the first step of mixed entry loss is to do a pair mining. As shown in the figure, for the positive items whose distance to the user is smaller than the distance of the closest negative item minus the margin are discarded. All the others are kept. For the negative items whose distance to the user are further than the distance of the furthest positive item plus the margin are discarded all the others are kept. Those pairs are discarded because they are considered as easy, positive, or negative pairs, and the model does not benefit from training on easy pairs. Now let me introduce you our loss function. As you can see, the top part of the loss has a term EUJ in it, which is the distance of a positive pair, UJ. And the bottom part of the loss has a part EUK in it, which is the distance of a negative pair, UK. The top part corresponds to the loss from the positive pairs, and the bottom part corresponds to the loss from the negative pairs. In the loss function, M is the batch size, B is batch of users, PSU and NSU are the selected positive and negative items for user U from the pair mining process. There are four hyperparameters in the function. Alpha and beta controls the loss contribution from positive and negative pairs respectively. Lambda p and lambda n control the margin allowance for the positive and negative pairs. 
Now we perform the same weight analysis on our loss. We get the weight for the positive here by taking the gradient of the top part of the loss. The weight WUJ is showing to the right. And the weight can be further break down into three components, W1, W2, and W3. We will discuss each component in the next slide. Similarly, we get the weight for the negative pair by taking the gradient of the bottom part of the loss, which we get WUK. And WK also has three parts, W1, W2, and W3. The effect of each component is visualizing the figure. And the red triangle is a positive item to the user. A blue triangle is a negative item. Black circles represents user 1, and gray circles represents user 2. The B1 component only depends on the distance between user and item. For a harder positive item where EUJ would be larger, and a harder negative item where EUK would be small, the W1 component would be smaller and the overall weight would be larger. And we refer this component as user item centric component. The W2 component compares the current pair with all the other pairs from the same user. For the positive pairs, if the positive pair is harder, means that it is further away from the user than the other positive pairs, then the overall weight would be larger. For the negative pairs, if the item is closer to the user than all the other negative pairs, then the overall weight would be larger. And we refer to this component as same type centric component. W3 component compares the current pair with all the other pairs in the same batch. For the positive pairs, if the current pair is further away from the user than all the other pairs in the batch, the weight would be larger. For the negative pairs, if the current pair is closer to the user than all the other pairs in the same batch, then the weight will be larger. And it refers to this component as batch centric component. Jointly, these components convey both local context on how the target item relates to the user and global context on how the item relates to other items of the same time from the target user, as well as other users in the dataset. Combining local and global context enables the model to enforce stricter consistency on the embedding space which, as we know in the experiment section, leads to better separation of the user item embeddings and significant accuracy improvement. Now we perform the complexity analysis on our framework. The time complexity of MCL can be split into two parts, pair mining and loss computation. To perform pair mining, we need to compute the scores for all the relevant pairs, which gives a complexity of O and D, where N is the total number of sampled pairs across all the users and the D is embedding dimension. Then we need to compare the scores to the closest negative pair and the furthest positive pair for each user, which gives an additional cost of NU plus PU per user, where NU is the number of ne negative pairs sampled for this user, and the PU is the number of positive pairs. The rest of the computation is spent on selecting the positive and negative pairs via the comparisons which adds additional n comparisons. The loss computation for each selected pair is constant, and therefore the extra amount of computation is bounded by n. The total complexity is the complexity for loss computation plus the complexity for pair mining, which in the end we get O and D. Here we show the complexity comparison between our loss and BPR, triplet, SML, and SRNS. The time complexity of MCL is the same as BPR triplet and SML, while SRS has higher complexity due to the score computation in the memory bank. All the five methods have the same space complexity. This analysis shows that our loss has the same complexity in time and space as BPR triplet and SML, while SRS has slightly higher time complexity. We evaluate our method on public datasets and compare against the leading CF baselines. 
we use the Amazon Digital Music, Amazon Grocery, Amazon Books, and Yelp 2021 datasets. The statistics for these datasets are summarized in below. The datasets vary in size and density, providing a comprehensive view of the model performance. Following the previous work, we randomly select 80% of the interactions for training, 10% for validation, and 10% for testing. To evaluate the top K ranking performance for each model, we adopt two widely used metrics, recall and normalized discounted cumulative gain, or NDCG. For the first set of experiments, we compare our loss MCL with two other losses, SML and SRNS. We implement these three methods on three different models, CML, NUMF, and LIGCN. We denote models trained with SML, SRNS, and our loss as plus SML, plus SRNS, and plus MCL, respectively. We also compare with models' original performances. The top table shows the results of recall, and the table below shows the results of NDCG. The best performing model is highlighted in bold, and the second best is underlined. We can see that adding MCL significantly improves performance for all models on each of the four datasets. And models with MCL achieve the highest performance compared to the same model with SML and SRS, demonstrating the effectiveness of MCL loss when combined with different base models. Particularly, Legacy plus MCL achieves the best performance across three different base models. So that's the one we choose to proceed to the second set of experiments. For the second set of experiments, we compare our method with VAECF, BPRMF, LRML, NGCF, and IMPGC, which are the five state of the art models. Our proposed loss added to a LEGCN model, which is LEGCN plus MCL, achieves new state of the art results on all datasets consistently and outperforms all other approaches. These results demonstrate that by leveraging information more effectively in the preference data and place additional constraints on the embedding space, we can achieve significant gains in the performance without changing the underlying model architecture. To understand why our model can have significant performance increase, we visualize the user and item embeddings in one dimensional and two dimensional space using TSE, along with the embeddings from BPR and triplet loss. The top two plots are the 1D projections with standard deviation to the left. The bottom three plots are the 2D projections. Both plots exemplify one of the major drawbacks of the triple loss. The weight is not distributed based on the difficulty of each pair. So easy positive gets a lot of weight, pulling the user and the positive items together to the center and forming large clusters. Since users that are close in proximity get similar recommendations, larger user clusters can have undesirable effects when it is difficult for the model to identify a specific user and provide truly personalized recommendations. The BPR loss is able to correct some of these drawbacks by using a dynamic weight scheme that depends on the relative difference of the pair distance. We see that BPR's 1D projection has more than 10 times larger standard deviation than the triple loss, and the 2D projection shows clear user subclusters that are spread throughout the embedding space. However, there is still a large cluster of users and items in the center. That cluster contains over 30% of all users within close proximity to each other and can lead to suboptimal recommendations. Our MCL loss further increased the standard deviation by over 50% relative to BPR. And from 2D projection, we see that both user and item are now separated into much tighter clusters that span the whole range of embedding space. In this paper, we present a new learning framework for implicit CF that consists of sample mining and also MCL loss. There are significant improvements on three different models using MCL across four datasets. In particular, when MCL is combined with LIGCN, we achieve the new state of the art on all datasets. Analysis of learned embedding space demonstrates that MCL achieves better user item separation comparing to EPR and triple loss. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate that you took the time to be here and listen to my presentation.